For chapter nine, what we're going to do is examine how companies account for receivables. So for most companies, they have customers and for whatever reason, some of those customers don't pay their bills. So what we're going to do is talk about um, an aging schedule, and this is what most companies do with consumer accounts. So whether it is the phone company, um, it's like Verizon or AT&T, or if it's a bank or credit card company, usually use uh, an aging schedule. So what we have here on the screen um, is an example. So it lists um, the percentages of uncollectible accounts for each receivables bucket. So what they mean by bucket is they have the number of days um, that consumers customers are late so we have not yet due so what this means for not yet due is that two percent of the customers with bills that are not yet due will not pay at the end of the day okay and if we go down to the bottom uh, where it says over 90 days late what it says that 50 percent of the customers that have not paid their bills in 90 days will never pay their bills okay so we have a list of three customers at the bottom here, customer A, B, and C. And customer A has a, customer a, has a receivables amount of $1,000, okay? And $500 is not yet due, and $500 is 31 to 60 days late, and so on and so forth for customer B and C, okay? So customer B has a receivable amount of $2,000, $400 is 30, um, up to 30 days late, $700 is 61 to 90 days, and 900 of that 2,000 is over 90 days late. So customer C has a $3,000 balance, um, so forth and so on, okay. So what I'm going to do is put this on a spreadsheet. So here's our spreadsheet. And we have customer A, B, and C. So again, customer a has a $1,000 balance okay and 500 is in the not yet due bucket and 500 is 31 to 60 days late okay and then customer B has a $2,000 balance and customer C has a $3,000 balance Okay, so with customer B, $400 is 1 to 30 days late, $700 is 61 to 90 days late, and $900 is over 90 days old. Okay, then customer C has $400 not yet due. Six hundred dollars is one to thirty days late. And two thousand dollars is thirty one to sixty days late. Okay. So now we need to include the percentages. So the not yet due category, approximately two percent of these people will not pay. Okay, meaning that $18 of this $900 will never ever be collected. Okay, and then we go on. The next bucket is 3%. The next bucket is 11%. The 61 to 90 days is 30%. And over 90 days is 50%. Okay, so the grand total of the uncollectible accounts based upon six thousand dollars of receivables is nine hundred and eighty three dollars so that amount is what probably will not be collected so the journal entry for that is we want a debit allowance for doubtful accounts the debit is for $983, excuse me, that is the credit, 
I'm sorry. And the debit is for bad debt expense. Okay. So the debit again is bad debt expense for $983. And the credit is to allowance for doubtful accounts for $983. Okay. And the net accounts receivable is just the difference between the total receivables amount and the, the amount that's uncollectible. Okay. Again, the allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay. Now, the last part of this is when it's been determined, or the company determines that this $983 will never ever be received for sure, then we want to actually write off this account. And to do that, we want to debit allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay. And then we want to credit accounts receivable. Okay. So the debit is for nine eighty three and again the credit for nine eighty three. So again the first journal entry records bad debt and the second journal entry writes off a bad debt.